In today's video we got three major things to talk about. The Rino Geronte nerf, the Prochetto 71 nerf and some predictions on when this tree is coming around and what exactly is going to happen with the Prochetto 71. Now let's jump right in into Rino Geronte. And for the people which already saw my preview video of the Rino Geronte, they already had the feeling I am pretty aware of this tank. I like the looks of it and I like uh, the playstyle of it, but I was already pretty confident in saying that the tank will get nerfed. And it wasn't to any surprise that it did got nerfed. And even one point which I was talking about, and um, that is it's too short interclip reload time. 1470 damage in just 6 seconds is a little bit too much if you keep in mind that it is fairly fast, has decent gunsoft stats and a 490 alpha gun. I saw some people around talking about well the T57 Heavy does the same um, 1600 damage in the same amount of time and that is a valid reason. But please don't forget it uh, just has 400 alpha and it most likely does not pose the same armor like the Rino Geronte. So yeah, another thing which also got nerfed was its aim time. It goes from 1.5 to 1.7 seconds. It's not a big nerf, but it's something you will probably feel in the first shot if you decide to clip. Because again, right now you do not have this 6 second burst anymore, you have 8 second burst. And again, I personally think this is a very well made nerf or a very well thought out nerf in my opinion. However, I said back then in my um, preview that I think it would be a good idea if they nerfed the recharge inside the drum or the reload in the drum itself that they made want to add or um, remove a little bit of reload time for the other rounds. So in total that for example if you need six pre-nerf six seconds to completely empty your clip and need like 50 seconds to completely load your gun. Maybe now you need inst eight seconds to completely empty your clip, but you need 48 seconds to, you know, um, fully reload it. But Wargaming actually went the other way around and did add one second to the first round to be loaded and one second to the second round to be loaded. However, the third round in your out reloader didn't change at all. It's still at 14.4 seconds reload time, which means the Rino Charonte still has a base max DPM of 2000, which is fairly interesting when you compare it to the Prochetto 66, the tier 9 heavy tank, which is at 2181 DPM. So yeah, I'm genuinely confused a little bit that the tier 10 actually has less DPM than the tier 9, but it does have a higher alpha gun, which is all right. I do think that Wargaming could potentially give the Rino Charonti a little bit more, um, or a little bit more DPM, max DPM, maybe like 100 or something, maybe maximum 150, but keep the interclip reload time at four seconds. I'm somebody which loves the Fosh 155 and has a four second reload time. You, and you, you know that it's not that great sometimes because a lot of people have enough reaction time to get away. But then again, don't forget it has a 750 alpha gun. Another, a lot of people also said they really dislike the Sharp Footer 4 for its 4 second intro creep lead time. However, please keep in mind the Rino Charonte as well as the Prochetto 66 have 400 and 490 alpha respectively and they have the ability to say I'm just going to shoot two rounds and then have like a 30 second reload time and bada bam bada boom you already have three rounds again. A lot of people I personally think which are now arguing that four second interclip do not understand that not only does the Rino Charonte has a high alpha and a high burst potential but also don't, un don't keep in mind that those tanks have the benefit of also sh can shoot whenever they want. They are not bound to a reloader. They are not bound like the T-77 to a 35 second reload time. They can say, Fick, I fucked up one shot and just use the 20 second reload time instead of waiting the whole 50 second in that regard, you know. Wargaming also decided to um, nerf a little bit the armor piercing round uh, from the speed wise. They also nerfed the heat round speed wise, but they buffed the hash round by a, quite a lot in speed 
department. And lastly, they did change the accuracy on the move and turret traverse from 0.18 to 0.22 on the move and from 0.10 to 0.14 on turret traverse. Those are quite substantial nerfs, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, turret accuracy, especially coupled with the 1.7 second now aim time. <coughs> but it's not that bad, I would say. Again, you still have a 1.7 second aim time, meaning that Roughly, you need around 2.83 seconds to fully aim in from full speed, you know. Full speed, slam on the brakes and aim in. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, I have to say I do agree with some parts of what Wargaming did just from on the paper with the Rino Geronte. And we should also keep in mind, my dear friends and followers, this tank so far from just the looks of it it doesn't really have any weak spot i highly doubt that this part will be a weak spot you know this one doesn't really look like a weak spot maybe this is a weak spot but then again i have to ask is this even going to be part of the damage model because it kind of looks like it's not really part of the tank itself it's just part of the hinge which is there to um, elevate and depress the gun you know and we can see it very well here and yeah this is what happens when somebody tickles your neck. <laughs> so yeah, I, I kind of don't really... It's, it's really hard to say how this tank is really going to perform without having hands-on experience. But I do like what Wargaming did, but I also do want to point out that I think the added reload of the, um, of the first and second round of the auto reloader is a little bit too much when you consider that there was also other nerfs. But again, this is super test. Chances are stuff will change. And so goes for the Prochetto 71, which is going to get released to the super test with update 1.10.1. Wargaming all only did small changes. They changed its accuracy on the movement from 0.23, which is already bad, to 0.26, which is even worse. And once again, here I want to say it's a pity. I dislike personally a lot inaccurate guns. I really dislike inaccurate guns because it's just frustrating when you have a good aim or have great aim in the sense of great aiming with your mouse which I just throw it around because I'm a retard but it's just kind of frustrating when then you just get punished because the gun doesn't behave as it should you know so once again I'd say for wargaming maybe consider giving the Prochetto 71 right here less DPM but make the gun handling a little bit better to just you know I don't know. Give it something more unique. As we don't need an Italian defender which has uh, good DPM but atrocious gun handling and decent armor. And also, we shouldn't forget, this tank also doesn't really have a cupola. Yes, there is a small cupola, but it will be insanely hard to hit when it has 10 degrees of gun depression. So yeah, it will be interesting to see how Wargaming is going to fare with the Prochetto 71 and I will keep my eyes peeled on what people around in Wargaming are going to say because I do know that some Wargaming employees I am in contact with are playing those tanks and sometimes give me some input on how they properly feel. Also, if anybody of Wargaming are actually watching my videos, like from Wargaming Minsk, I would like to know. It would be very interesting to get in touch with you. I have a lot of questions which I really want to ask. And I am honest, sure, some might be tough, but uh, I'm just insanely curious about a game which I used a lot of time in. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Wargaming themselves said they do not want to fuck this up. They do want to make those tanks as balanced as possible. So that will be interesting to see how this turns out. Most important thing, Wargaming, please keep in mind, you are the maker of the game you can change this tank, this line, if it's underperforming or overperforming. Here, sadly, you do have to make it right in the first place. My suggestion is try to make it a little bit underpowered or feels like a little bit underpowered and maybe afterwards slightly buff it. Don't release another tank which is too strong at the beginning of its lifespan, like a tank like the Burrusk. Now, Let's talk about the predictions when those tanks are coming out. I personally just have the feeling that chances are insanely high that the Italian heavies will come with the Christmas patch. And I will show you just why. Also, there are two options to what is going to happen with the Prochetto 71. I heard two major voices. One is loot box exclusive to boost sales. Makes a lot of sense. And the other is it's going to be a marathon tank. And this is what I am leaning on. And I will explain why exactly. 
Now, why prediction release? In 2016, we got the new Swedish tanks right before Christmas. In 2017, right before Christmas, we got another new tree. And this kind of just feels like it was the AMX M4 heavy tank tree, if you are wondering. And it just feels to me like it would make so much sense for Wargaming to release another new tree they are already working on right now. And it looks like they are insanely pushing about them because it will boost activity. Obviously, Christmas, a lot of people are home, a lot of people have vacation, they can play a lot. They got Christmas money, they might spend it on loot boxes, you know. They might spend it on a new premium tank anyway. So it's also just something which happened last year. However, Wargaming did explicitly say that they kind of had a bad timing, a bad day in a sense that they wanted to release the double barrel guns before Christmas. But sadly, they simply weren't able to do it with holiday ops to also be around the corner. This might happen here as well, but I'm pretty certain that in their internal documents, Wargaming is saying this tree has to come out in the middle of December. So yeah, I'm pretty confident that it will be in update 1.11 that the Italian heavy tanks are coming. In the end, the only tanks which doesn't have a proper model yet are the tier 8 and the tier 9. The tier 7 have a model, the tier 10 have a model, and the pre uh, premium already have a model. Just two more tanks, they already have sat down, know what they want to do. One tank even have proper stats already. So yeah, now... The other prediction, the loot box exclusive VD. Here, I have to say, a lot of people again are saying Wargaming is going to introduce the Prochetto 71 as a loot box exclusive tank, which makes sense if you look at the history with the Object 703 version 2, being only released in those loot boxes with the E75TS. During the year, they were released normally, which is good, I guess, but it just kind of felt ech, you know. But, and here comes the big, 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 big but, I don't think the Prochetto 71 will be loot box exclusive because there is one major thing which is playing into our hands. First thing, there are two tanks getting added to the super test as well, like the T-77 and like the CS-52 before. And they got released very, very quickly. First one being the GSO 1008 and the second one being the Object 274A. So why should Wargaming, if they plan to release the Prochetto, uh, the, the new Italian heavy tank line on Christmas, make a premium tank loot box exclusive, you know? When there are two unique tanks already in the workings, the Object 274A, which is a mini 430U, and the GZO 1008, which is a very, very unique auto-loading tank destroyer of the British Tech 3. Those tanks would both fit very, very decently into the loot boxes exclusivity. Why exactly? Because Wargaming usually puts unique tanks in there. Object 703 were a perfect example, like the E75TS. Last year it was the IS-3A with its unique and reworked mechanic. And the other major point is that chances are very high that Wargaming is going to release another marathon. Why exactly? Last year, around the end of November and the beginning of December, Wargaming released the Renegade Marathon. And Wargaming usually makes three marathons per year. One in spring, one in summer and one in, f well, Christmas or almost close to Christmas. And I think this would be a perfect time to release the Prochetto 71 as a marathon tank to not only boost the sales of hyping up the new tech tree which is coming very very soon but also then helping to boost the sales of the christmas um, of the loot boxes the christmas loot boxes why because then you have another new and unique tank like the gzor and like the object 274 a being in there so you potentially can get a lot more money out of the people than the other way around because the other way around they're like oh yeah i just get the new tank anyway the prochetto for the new line and here they have to put in money for a new tank which is good for training the new crew for the new line while also having two very unique vehicles being in the loot boxes as well still i do think that object 274a should be reworked to tier 9 because there it will be a lot better than on tier 8 because on tier 8 it just feels quite castrated but yeah that's everything I'm having for you today. 
will be interesting to see what Wargaming is going to do with those things they have at hand. And yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think if I'm correct or not and we'll maybe see in two months if I was correct or not. I do like to do some predictions because it's a very interesting thing and it's a lot of fun to talk about. However, please keep in mind and check out these awesome and epic guys because they finally released a very very good video featuring me where we had shitloads of fun and please just check it out it was absolutely amazing i had such an insane laugh while um, watching the video why because i forgot about so much thing we did back there and it's very well edited something i'm definitely not able to do don't forget to leave me any feedback i would like to improve my videos always thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you around don't forget to subscribe and to all the new viewers which are coming from the awesome epic guys Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you around. Cheers.